Good evening. I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome you to the PM services of the Northfield Church of Christ for Sunday, uh, March the 19th. We will be singing a few songs and observing the Lord's Supper. And I have a message for you that I hope that uh, will be enlightening and enjoyable and uh, will serve uh, some good purpose. Hey, uh, here at the Northfield Church, we sing from Songs of Faith and Praise. Uh, if you do not have that book, I will give you the title so that uh, you can either Google it or if you have another book, you can sing along with us. I'll give you the number and the name of the song. <coughs> the first song that we will sing is Oh, Praise the Lord. Oh, Praise the Lord. In our song book, it is number 282. Oh, Praise Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Oh, praise the Lord, all ye nations. Praise him, all ye people. Praise him, all ye people. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise him, all ye people, for his merciful kindness is great toward us. Is great toward us. And the truth of the Lord endureth forever, forever and ever, ever and ever. Praise ye the Lord. The next song will be number 722. <clears throat> I love this song. The title is Let the Beauty of Jesus Be Seen. <clears throat> Seven twenty-two messages uh, so pertinent to all of us that the beauty of Jesus is seen in each one of us. Seven twenty-two. Let the beauty of Jesus be seen. <clears throat> Let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. All his wonderful passion and purity. May his spirit divine all my being refine. Let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. When somebody has been so unkind to you, some word spoken that pierces you through and through, think how he was beguiled, spat upon and reviled, let the beauty of Jesus be seen in you. From the dawn of the morning to close of day, in example, in deeds, and in all you say, lay your gifts at his feet, Ever strive to keep sweet, let the beauty of Jesus be seen in you. And before the Lord's Supper, we're going to sing number 359, I Love the Lord. <clears throat> Three fifty nine. I love the Lord. We will sing uh, the three verses and then sing the chorus at the end. We'll sing the three verses and the chorus at the end. Let uh, I love the Lord. <clears throat> oh. 
I love the Lord, for he died my soul to save. On Calvary, his dear life he freely gave. From realms above, Jesus freely came to die, that I might live someday with him on high. I love the Lord, for he saved the lost from sin. He gave them life to be whole and free again, to live on high with them never more to die. All oh, praise his name, we'll see him by and by. I love the Lord, for his love so full and free. He taught us why, that our love like his should be. To be like him, and compassion freely give. Oh, bless his name, we then with him could live. I love the Lord, he has been so good to me. He gave his life from sin to set me free. No greater love than his could ever be. I love the Lord because he first loved me. Uh, now is the time that we gather about the Lord's table to commemorate the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, it is a somber time. It is a time of reflection. It is a time of a vertical relationship between us and our God through Jesus Christ. Yet, because it is called communion, it is something that we do together. It is something that on the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he shared the supper with his disciples. And so as we gather about the table, we're sharing the Lord's Supper with those around us that we care for, our brothers and sisters in the Lord. There's so much significance to the Lord's Supper when we think of God's gift to us, that Jesus left his a warm place at the right hand of God to come down to earth in human form. Uh, and uh, the wonderful things that he did that showed he was the son of God and the son of man. And the part of him that was the son of man that was crucified upon the cross. And so there are two emblems that we partake of when we uh, observe the Lord's Supper. We partake of the bread that is representative of his body. We partake of the fruit of the vine, which is representative of the blood that he shed. Let's uh, make this something that's so very, very important to us. Let's uh, think that it happened just moments ago rather than 2,000 years ago, so it stays relevant in our hearts. Let's give thanks for the bread. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're grateful that you, in part of your master plan, sent Jesus to us at just the right time. We're thankful for his life, but at this time we think about his death. We think about the sacrifice that he made for mankind as he hung upon the cross, as his body was abused, as he suffered the agony of the cross. Help us to understand that he did that for us as we partake of the bread. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. Pray for the cup. We know that in dying, that Jesus shed his innocent blood. Blood that uh, wasn't supposed to be shed, but as part of your divine plan had to be shed 
so that Jesus could be the one time and perfect sacrifice for each one of us. As we partake of this fruit of the vine, let's remember the blood that flowed from his head, his hands, his feet, and his side, and understand the significance of that blood, that it is the power to wash away our sins. Let's take this in a manner that you would be pleasing with. We prayed in his most holy name. Amen. With the Lord's Supper being completed at, at this time as a matter of convenience, we give back to the Lord that which uh, we have been blessed with. There are so many scriptures that talk about us giving. And there are so many scriptures, especially in James, that tell us that all good things come from above. And so as we give back, help us to understand we're just giving back, which is that which is on loan to us. And uh, we just pray that as we give, we will give with a cheerful heart, that we will give with gratitude, and that we will give as we certainly have prospered. Let's pray for the giving. Well, great older Heavenly Father, that uh, we live a life in which we have been blessed so many ways. And at this time, uh, we think of the ways that we have been physically blessed. And so we give back to you just a, a piece of what we have. We give back to you with purpose. We give back to you with gratitude. We give back to you with cheerfulness knowing that these monies will be used for the furtherance of your work here on earth. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, to be generous. Help us to be the giving people that we ought to be as your servants. We pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. And we will close with number 273, more precious than silver. 273 more precious than silver. Lord, you are more precious than silver. Lord, you are more costly than gold. Lord, you are more beautiful than diamonds, and nothing I desire compares with you. I totally enjoyed the song service this evening. I hope you did. I know that the Lord was praised, and we know that the Lord is worthy of that praise. Uh, we are going to, uh, I am going to share a message with you. Uh, it will be a fairly short message, so uh, hang in there and uh, try to get uh, all of the small little things that I hope will be beneficial to us. And the title of my lesson this evening is, What Can We Do? Right? What can we do? You know, we live in a world. Uh, all we have to do is, is turn on that 24 hour news cycle. And we know that, well, if we live in a rather chaotic world, uh, we look around us and we see over a year ago that the Russians invaded the Ukraine. We see the threat in North Korea. Uh, we see the, the threats in China and the turmoil in the Middle East. And then we even look uh, in our own country and see, we see people very often at odds with one another. And so uh, with that in mind, I beg the question, what can we do? What can we do about that? Can we reverse the cycle of what is going on in the world? Well, I would first uh, state to you that I think the first thing that we can do is to live a good Christian life. Christ should shine through 
our lives. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, Jesus said, Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Through shining the way we are supposed to shine, when Jesus said that we are the light of the world, uh, that's so very, very, very important. And we are to shine as the light to the world. We shine before men. People should be able to see that there is a better way of life. That we reflect the beauty of Jesus Christ and all that he stood for as the Son of God and as the Son of Man. Paul said it this way, Do all things without grumbling or disputing so that you will prove yourself to be blameless and innocent children above reproach in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you appear as lights to the world. There's that, there's that light again. There's the same words intoned by the Apostle Paul that Jesus used of us as his followers being lights of the world. And moreover, as Christians being lights to the world. Now, Paul makes no uh, uh, small change of the fact that they live in a crooked and perverse generation. Every time we think that things can't get any worse than they are, look at the words written in Philippians some 2,000 years ago. Let's not think that they lived in nirvana. Let's not think that they had a perpetual Eden. Uh, they lived in a crooked and perverse generation. And so what Jesus said was to let your light, light shine before men. And with that, we glorify both him and the Father in heaven. And the Apostle Paul even took it one step further when he said the fact that we live in a crooked and perverse generation of people, who's going to be the light? Who's going to be the light of the world? Who will reflect the goodness of God? Well, uh, it's a rhetorical question, isn't it? It's rhetorical in the sense that uh, Jesus says it, and we say it, that we are to be the light of the world. Well, you know what? Jesus died so that the church could be founded. And he died so that we could be an, an active part of that church. We're, we're living in a world, sometimes in a country, that has rejected the church. But Christ established the church to do the work that he wants to get accomplished. It is through the church that the work of the Lord gets accomplished. And the, the world needs to see, vis-a-vis -vis even this country needs to see, that a, tr a true Christian has a certain persona about them that they reflect Jesus Christ's principles and the commands. And when these principles and commands are followed, that they will make this world a better world. And I think that's part of what we're supposed to be all about. We're supposed to improve the world. We're the lights of the world. And so first, we need to live a faithful Christian life. Two, we need to defend that which we believe in. In other words, we need to defend the faith. You know, the, the United States and the world is, is filled with false ideas. 
And understand, these false ideas were around in the writings of the New Testament. Paul said often, beware of false teachers because they will drag you away from the truth. Jude, in Jude verse 3, said this, Contend earnestly for the faith. All right, what's the faith? The faith is what we believe in. The faith is the fact that we are Christians and we're supposed to live a good, faithful Christian life. And so Jude said, contend earnestly for the faith. Now, Peter, in 1 Peter chapter 1, uh, I'm sorry, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15, put a, a slightly different spin on it. He said, sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts, always being ready to give a defense to anyone who asks you to give an account for the hope that is in you, yet with gentleness and reverence. You see, when, when we proclaim that we are Christians, we need to explain to people why we are. When we contend to be the light of the world, when we contend that our faith must be uh, defended, then we need to be able to give a defense for what we believe. It, it, it's almost like the game of football. You know, the offense is the one that scores. The defense has to make all the adjustments to keep the offense from scoring. So there are two sides battling against one another. Well, I would contend that as Christians, we're on the offense. We're, we're declaring God's word as faithful Christians. And we have to be ready uh, to explain to people, this is why we're doing this. But notice, he says, with all gentleness. And this brings us to the third point of my lesson this evening. It is to defend the truth, yet do it in a gentle manner. Notice at the end of First Peter chapter 3, verse 15, he said, yet with gentleness and reverence. This is a wonderful book, but we can't hit people over the head with it. We need to defend the truth of God's word with gentleness and with reverence. We need to deal with people in a gentle way. At the same time, have reverence for the truth of God's word. Now, the Apostle Paul put it this way in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 14. He said, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in all aspects into him who is the head, even Christ. And so in defending the faith, and doing it in a, a loving manner. Paul says, speaking the truth in love. I'm telling you the truth about Jesus Christ because Jesus loves us. And he said to us, love one another. He said, first, you're to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul and all of your mind. And then he said, you are to love your neighbor as yourself. And so we defend the truth when we share this truth with our neighbor as we're growing up in all aspects into Christ. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to get other folks to grow into Christ because we understand how great it is to be in the Lord. And finally, we are to be that example. We are to be that example to all around us. We, we have the example of Timothy 
And Timothy was the protege of, of the Apostle Paul. He was such a, a great a minister of the gospel that Paul addressed two letters to Timothy. And they are, they are pointed and yet they are gentle in their nature. And they explain to Timothy what he is supposed to do. And, and Timothy didn't come by this by accident. He had a grandmother and a mother who were in the faith. And because of that, Timothy had a head start. He had a godly grandmother and a godly mother. Isn't that wonderful to, to think about? Even when we think about Moses, you know, when, when the Pharaoh was going to kill all the male children and Moses' uh, mother put him in a basket and Pharaoh's daughter picked him up, uh, and kind of raised Moses as her own. But you know what? Moses had learned at his mother's feet and his in fact, his mother even became his nurse for a period of time. And so Moses came to understand who he really was. And Timothy came to understand what goodness is all about. And so we are to, to share that if we're family people with our children, with our grandchildren. If, if we don't do that, if, if we don't teach the truth of God's word, who's going to do that? Who's going to share that with the people of this country and the people of the world? It's so very, very important to remember. One of my favorite stories in the Old Testament is the story when Joshua crossed the Jordan River. It was a wonderful miracle that God piled up the waters of the Jordan, similarly to the way he had piled up the waters of the Red Sea. And the people were able to walk through that dry uh, expanse into the promised land. Remember, there were a couple of million people that went through the Red Sea. There was a huge contingent of people that walked through that dry land to the Jordan. And then there was something that God told Joshua to share with the people. He said, Joshua, the people should never forget what happened here. There must be a witness to your children and your grandchildren. And so he had one of each tribe go into the river and take out a rock. And somewhere on the shore, an altar was built with all of these rocks in this wonderful formation. The purpose? God told Joshua, he said, this is the way it is. When, when our children and our children's children come to this place and it will be a hallowed place. It's, it's where the children of Israel crossed into the promised land. These stones will be a, a teaching tool. They'll be a reminder to the people of how great God is, that he delivered them. He fulfilled his promise that these people would see their own native land, the promised land, if you would. It's a, it's a stirring story, but it's a story that, that just folds all together with the lesson tonight. First, we are to live a faithful Christian life, letting our lights shine before men, letting our light shine in a perverse generation. We are to defend that faith. We are to contend earnestly for it to the point where we should be ready to give an answer as to why we believe why we believe. Thirdly, we are to do it in a gentle manner, speaking the truth in love 
as we grow up into all aspects into God. And finally, it's something that should be part of our DNA. It should be part of what we are made of. It should be part of our, our muscle and our bone and our sinew and the marrow of our bones. It should be a part of us. The fact that we are the Lord's and we are to do with our lives what the Lord wants us to do with them. To share the good word with those around us as we live a Christian life. The world is not the best place. We're the lights. We're the ones that have the truth. Let's all show that truth that we have by making a difference in the world. If you haven't started your Christian walk, we offer the invitation. If you need to come to Jesus this evening, if you need to confess Jesus as the Son of God and repent of your former lives and be baptized for the remission of your sin, I pray that you will, and if you need that, immediately get in touch with one of us so that we can be there for you. I pray that uh, we have learned something from this lesson this evening. Let's close with a prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we're grateful for the time that we've had together. We're grateful that uh, you have given us the truth of your word. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, to make a difference in this world. We know in many ways this is a, not a nice world. People are at one another and and biting against one another. And we have the truth of your word. Help us to be the lights of the world. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, to defend our faith. Help us to understand the truth of what you have and not be afraid of, of the testimony of God and be willing to share it with those that we care for. Bless us, dear Heavenly Father, as we we go on our Christian sojourn. May it be one that leads us to you one day, as this is our goal in life, to live with you forever. Be with us this evening. Be with us for the rest of the evening. Help us to look forward to all the times that we get together to worship and to study your word. Continue to be with us. We pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Please be safe and may God bless you all.